faced with that dilemma again, is it too early to start a grinder? Oh, he was a bit of a shit show, to be honest. Um, it's on and it's solid, so that's the main thing about it. We made the decision to haul out Nanji for the third time this year to complete further upgrades to our home in preparation for our baby Spud's arrival early in 2021. However, we do have further problems that need fixing after our little kiss of the reef scenario earlier this year. Our cutlass bearing had wore out rapidly due to my suspicions of a bent shaft. After swearing my way through removing the drive system, the shaft is now with an engineer to find out if my diagnosis is correct. With plenty of other jobs to keep me busy, it's off to another day in the boatyard. Oh, one thing I noticed on my morning walks across from the unit to the boat is all these flowers. And it's nice that you've got flowers down the medium strip. It's like some bougainvilleas in there. But Benita pointed out, they're all bathtubs. The pots are bathtubs. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I reckon that's pretty funny. <laughs> There's like hundreds of them. There must have been a surplus in bathtubs because no one wants them. <laughs> one thing you've really noticed about in Malaysia is that the sun comes up pretty late. The sun doesn't really come up until seven sort of thing. And so people don't really arrive to work until about eight. And there isn't really much noise until around eight or thereafter. It's just like, how long do you wait before you turn a grinder on? We're in the boatyard. It's quarter past seven. It's the coolest in the morning, you know, so I'm going to sperm suit up and jump in the man cave and get some grinding going on. I kind of want to do it early. Ah, the neighbour's leaving in a few days anyway. <laughs> the second major issue that's in need of some love is Nancy's transom. During our sail down to the boatyard, whilst we were using the wind vane, we noticed it wobble and move. Since removing the vane off of the transom, we discovered further problems and the reasons for the hydrovane movement. Bent bolts, crack pads, loose bolt holes, and wet wood inside the transom. You put me to work. You now I. Remember that one? See that bottom one? Yeah, you want me just it. to hold it? Yeah, just hold it. Yeah, you gotta change this washer over, eh? It's pretty rusty. Is this 316? I've already been busy with the grinder and ground back the fiberglass on the inside of the lazarette to expose the wet wood. After weeks of daily treating the timber with acetone and letting the area dry out, it was time to rebuild and strengthen the transom. So you can see I've pretty much filled up the whole back of the transom here now, or at least all on the port side where that moisture got in. and. Uh, I kind of just, it may look like a lot of filler, but it actually, I didn't build it out of filler. I've kind of used the filler on the outside and just gradually raised it because as I was pumping all of the penetrating epoxy in, it would find a few little holes here and there where it would seep out of the side and then it would run. So it wasn't staying all in the back of the transom. So I figured if I slowly build it up with a bit of filler going higher and higher as I go and wait till the epoxy is spilling out of the top rather than out of the sides. So that's what I've done. And now we've, the whole transom there is just full of penetrating epoxy. That whole transom is now so solid, which is a good feeling. And uh, now, yeah, so the, the fill is just kind of a bit of a, bit of a surface layer on top there. So I'll get the grinder out and I'll buff all that back. So to make it sort of one flat, complete surface. And then I can start glassing in here just to like fully reinforce it. So I'll, I'll glass into the sides so tub it around this edge and then put a big piece of glass over the back here and basically I can't overbuild it and it's all about making this super strong. It'll take a lot of force, this transom. And if you're in a big sea and we're relying upon Rob Dog or Hydrovane to, to steer us all the time, it needs to be connected to the boat in a serious way. And so just to fully reinforce this whole transom and making all of this really solid so the attachment and the load is going to be spread out over, over a larger area and therefore we shouldn't ever have any more problems on the transom here and with the hydrovane. Fingers crossed, touch wood. 
I literally spent hours in here with the heat gun just going back and forth to make sure there was no moisture left in the transom anywhere. So that it was a very long, tedious, sweaty process, but I, I just wanted to make sure that all the moisture was out. When we hit the reef, the holes where uh, the hydrovane was attached had been skewed and bent a bit, and over the months of uh, that damage occurred, I think, I guess water's just slowly seeped in. So there it was a few soft spots through the transom, and I just wanted to get rid of all of that, which is why I spent so many hours on a heat gun just drying out the whole transom. And now I'm, I'm definitely happy that it's bloody rock solid. And by the time I finish glassing it. All right, so that's the, so that's the finished product there. That's the transom. It is all well nice and scratched up because the sanding disc I used was a 40 grit disc. So, uh, and I was pretty rough and hacked into it. You know, that's the whole point. You want something for the epoxy to bond to. On the clock, I haven't used this West system before. So I don't know how quickly it's going to kick. So it just has to be fast. So I'll try it on these small little patches first. Well, that was a bit of a mad rush trying to get those little bits in, but it's all in and it looks like I've done a pretty good job at that. But I was hoping to hot box the whole lot, so put the big bit of glass on top of these little tabs and edges, and so it all would go off at once. But uh, it's a pretty hot day, and the West system kind of goes off a little bit faster than the epoxy I was using previously. Uh, previously, I was using Epitech epoxy, which is like a four to one. It's uh, made in Thailand, it's a really good epoxy, and basically, to define how good your epoxy is, it's all about how much resin you have to mix with hardener. And four parts to one is really good. And this West system is five to one, so it's an even better epoxy. And it's just going off a little bit faster. That might be because it's hot and everything else as well. But so I've only had about half an hour, 45 minutes to play. Um, and so I've got those all those edges and stuff in. And so I'll just have to let all this go off before I go and put the big piece on over the top. So I'll have to get the grinder out in between but it's not such a big deal, I want it to be perfect. I just, it's just another grinder, another session in a sperm suit. So. <sighs> Faced with that dilemma again, is it too early to start a grinder? Got my sperm suit sitting there waiting. I've got everything set up, ready to grind back the fiberglass that we did yesterday. Uh, just in, on the transom, so I can just got to clean it up so I can lay this last big piece of glass over the whole back of the transom. But it's now, well, it's quarter to eight. Like, I don't think it's too early yet. It is a boat yard, isn't it, people? But it's a very silent morning. Put it that way, I can't hear a lot of activity around the yard in the marina. Can't see anyone moving. It's a Friday morning, so it's not the weekend yet. I kind of feel that because it's nice and cool, I'm going to get stuck into it. Sorry, neighbours. And the prices you pay when you live in a boat yard. Oh, we got everything lined up. I've got my piece of glass down ready uh, to wet out on some fresh bit of plastic there. I've got my acetone, my mask, my safety gear, my scissors all sitting there ready. Got the sperm suit here that I'll have to put on before I mix the epoxy. And I guess we'll go down and get some gloves, start mixing this epoxy and get into it. Always get a little bit nervous pre-glass, but just make sure I've got all my, all my steps covered and everything is there at the ready, and then we should be sweet. So I've got that glassing done just in time. I had to close the hatch of the lazarette there because it just started raining a little bit and we've still got a bit of a sun shower now, but it never, the epoxy and everything never got wet, but it'll just be a bit of moisture in the air now in the lazarette, so that sucks a little bit, but uh, it should be fine. None of it got wet, so I think it'll kick off pretty good. West System's a really good epoxy to, to work with. You can, uh, it kicks off a little bit quicker than the Epotech, but uh, you still have plenty of time to play with it, and it's just a nice, simple, easy epoxy to use. It's hard to film all of this by yourself. Can't really set the camera up and climb in the lazarette while I've got a <sighs> respirator, goggles, gloves, sperm suit, playing with epoxy sort of thing. So uh, you've seen enough of me fiberglassing to know how I do it. I like to use my hands. I don't use a roller. For all of those people that say, you need to use a roller. Well, I say, no, you don't. I'll do what I want and I'll do it my way. And my way seems to be working. And so 
I like to do things a little bit unconventional and that's the way I've done it. I learned from Uncle and Uncle was, uh, he's a 30, 30 year plus fiberglass of surfboards and that man knows what he's talking about when it comes to fiberglass and he says you don't need to use a roller and he hates using them. And so, like master, like apprentice, I follow in the master's footsteps. So, if you still want to argue with me that you need a roller, well, go your hardest. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm happy how, how it's all come out. You just need to know what you're looking for. I understand the use of a roller is to spread the epoxy around, but I like to use my hands for that, and I just feel like I can find the air bubbles better than what I can by using a roller. And so, yeah, it's just, you can still give it a nice, even disbursement amount of epoxy by using your hands. And so that's what I've done, and I'm happy that that is going to be solid and strong. I stayed with it for a bit and kept putting epoxy up, because epoxy does like to drain through the glass, so you just have to keep rubbing it up until it gets a little bit tacky, just to make sure the epoxy does stay in, in the top of halves of the fiberglass so it doesn't dry out. Some people say to put fiber, uh, to use cling wrap over the top, I've never tried that before. But I can see how that would work, but I've never tried it before, so uh, until there's something smaller where I can try that, maybe I'll do it then, but until then, I'll just keep rolling with the way I know how, my unconventional Yoshi way. But that's done, and it's raining, and Marley's downstairs and he's sulking, so might go back to the unit now for breakfast and go see the vessel and have a coffee. While well, Yoshi's been in the boatyard, I've been editing and also doing our taxes. So I'm just trying to get all of those jobs done that just kind of linger in the background. Um, get them done now so then when the baby's here, like I can just kind of focus on that more. Um, so I'm like way ahead on the video editing side of things and um, I've almost finished the taxes as well, which has been so awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. We've just nipped down to the old shops and got ourselves a big ass bit of two mil aluminium plate. Out of this I'm going to cut a big backing plate so it will kind of fit to that area of the transom that I've re-glassed. This will be a little bit smaller. Previously there was a couple of backing plates where the hydro vane bolted through to on, on both, both sides but I decided that I'm just going to make one big ass backing plate over the whole area and this just should make it just totally solid and when it goes in I'll put a heap of epoxy on the back just to fill in any voids. So I've got my rough diagram going on here. See if she fits. What are the odds? I'm guessing 50-50 it'll fit. Mm. With a freshly rebuilt solid transom once again, I reinstalled Rob Dog the Hydrovane back onto Nanji's butt. Using plenty of Sikaflex on all surfaces of the chain plates, the new teak razor pads and around the bolts to prevent any further water ingress. Then mixing a hefty amount of epoxy filler, I continue to spread this over the entire backing plate. Take it easy. I did this to ensure an even contact of the backing plate across the transom to help spread the load of the hydrovane when it's in use. Feeling a little rushed to beat the curing times of the Sikaflex and epoxy, things got messy quickly. Well it's on. That's the best thing and it feels really solid as well like there's no play in the bolts there's no play the big backing plate just covers everything and i'm glad i put so much filler on the back of that backing plate because it's all squeezed out the sides and everything so it's definitely a solid contacting surface uh, it's on and it's solid so that's the main thing about it looks comes about third i know that should be a little bit higher but as long as it's solid and safe they're the two main things i'm worried about and then looks is at the end it's on.